A big development this morning. To think that this is happening is like, what? In the case of a missing and perhaps murdered mother. A somber update. Shots were fired. To an MLK Day tragedy in Florida. Miami answering the call. So I think as people from the South, we should take action and make an impact. After harsh winter weather slows blood donations to our North. And the Panthers face off north of the border on the hunt for a third straight win. These stories and more coming up on Newsbreak. Hello, South Florida. I'm Kenya Cardone. I'm Amanda Gray. Today is Wednesday, January 18th, 2023. Live from the FIU Lee Kaplan School of Journalism and Media, this is SFMN Newsbreak. There's a big development in the case of a missing Massachusetts mom, Anna Walsh. Authorities issued an arrest warrant charging Walsh's husband with her murder. As CNN's Emily Schmidt reports, Brian Walsh could be in court as soon as later today. Brian Walsh remained publicly silent about his wife's disappearance when he was charged with misleading authorities, a charge he denied. But outside views of evidence gathering and inside neighbor perspectives. To think that this is happening is like, what? Snippets of evidence in the family home. Blood was found in the basement area, as well as a knife, which also contained some blood. All combined to indicate there may be more to Brian Walsh's story than he told. Tuesday, the district attorney added a murder charge. Additional details in the investigation and the evidence in support of those charges are likely to be presented at arraignment. Brian Walsh's attorney declined to comment. Investigators say Brian Walsh told them he last saw his wife on January 1st when she left for the airport to go to her job in Washington, D.C. Prosecutors say there's no evidence she ever took a flight. She never showed up to work. They've reported finding surveillance video of Brian Walsh buying $450 worth of cleaning supplies on January 2nd, two days before Anna's office reported her missing. More clues, according to law enforcement sources. There were searches on Brian Walsh's computer about how to dispose of a 115 pound woman's body and how to dismember a body. With one parent behind bars, the other missing, the three young Walsh children are in the custody of the Massachusetts Department of Children and Families. I'm Emily Schmidt reporting. Brian Walsh pled not guilty to his original charge of misleading investigators. He was already on house arrest before his wife disappeared after pleading guilty to selling fake art online. 15 years after a different Massachusetts woman went missing, her ex-boyfriend was arrested here in Florida. It's in connection to the woman's 2007 disappearance. 33-year-old David Pena was arraigned on a murder charge yesterday in Boston in relation to the death of Felicia McGuire, his ex-girlfriend. At the time of McGuire's disappearance, she was 32 years old and Pena was 17. McGuire was mother to a 10-year-old son and was reported missing 10 days after she was last seen. Although police never found her body, they referred to it as a homicide. Pena is being held without bail and his next court appearance has been set for February 17th. Tragedy in the aftermath of Fort Pierce shooting as police confirm one victim has died. The mass shooting happened on Monday during a Martin Luther King Jr. parade where more than 1,000 people were in attendance. Eight people were shot, four more were injured trying to flee, and Sheriff Ken Mascara held a news conference yesterday to share the news of the fatality. Eight people were shot, four others were injured as they attempted to flee that chaotic scene of the shooting. I'm here to sadly report that one of those victims died this morning. Fort Pierce, who was at the event with her six-year-old daughter. Oral arguments begin this morning in the appeal case of former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin. His lawyers are asking the Minnesota Court of Appeals to overturn the 22 and a half year prison sentence over the murder of George Floyd. The attorneys are arguing the case should not have been tried in Minneapolis, that the jury should have been fully sequestered, and that the trial should have been delayed due to its high profile nature. Florida Republican Governor Ron DeSantis is proposing a new policy that could permanently change the way the pandemic is handled. DeSantis is known among the GOP for his response to the COVID-19 pandemic, and the proposal, which he announced in Tallahassee yesterday, permanently bans COVID-19 mitigation measures in Florida. This includes vaccine and mask requirements in schools and businesses. 
an international airport here in South Florida has made a list of most likely to have a gun found by security in 2022. Fort Lauderdale Hollywood International Airport is number seven on that list. Atlanta is number one on the list. Two other Florida airports, Orlando and Tampa, are also on the list. For military veterans, the cost of mental health treatment can add insult to injury. But as Natalie LaRoche reports from our D.C. Bureau, there is now some free help. Starting January 17th, veterans in suicidal crisis can receive care at any health facility at no charge. Veteran suicide rates were highest in 2018 at almost 128 suicides daily, but the number has been decreasing since then. This measure is part of the VA Department's 10-year national strategy for preventing veteran suicide plan, which was launched in 2018 and is also part of the Reducing Military and Veteran Suicide Plan by the current White House administration. VA Secretary Dennis McDonough said in a statement, quote, This expansion of care will save veterans' lives, and there is nothing more important than that. The VA annual report from last year found that in 2020, suicide was the second leading cause of death among veterans under the age of 45 and the 13th cause of death of all veterans. More than 6,000 veterans took their own lives that year. The program includes services to finance treatment, and it is not required for veterans to be enrolled in the VA system to reap the benefits. Reporting from Washington, D.C. for the South Florida Media Network, I'm Natalie LaRoche. New details in President Biden's classified documents investigation. As Sofia Zuniga from our D.C. Bureau reports, they're consulting the Justice Department before their next move. During January 17th's press briefing, White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre declined to comment on Biden's classified documents before saying he and his team quickly communicated with the Department of Justice when the documents were found. The president has confidence. I can tell you this, that the president and his team uh, rightfully took action when they learned that the documents ex existed. They reached out to the archives. They reached out to the Department of Justice. Biden's administration has faced criticism from Democrats for their lack of communication to the public. When John Pierre was asked if there are going to be additional searches, she didn't elaborate and emphasized that the White House has been cooperative. One of the things that we have said for the last two years, when it comes to the Department of Justice, when it comes to legal matters, when it comes to legal issues, uh, we have been very clear that we are not going to comment, we are not going to uh, politically interfere. So far, 15 documents have been found, with one being marked as top secret, according to media reports. Attorney General Merrick Garland recently appointed Robert Herr as special counsel to look into the whole matter, including how the classified documents were handled by Biden's aides. Some Democrats worry that this would impact President Joe Biden's potential re-election campaign, since it would be hard to criticize former President Trump and his classified documents found in his Florida home. Reporting from Washington, D.C. for the South Florida Media Network, I'm Sofia Zuniga. The Panthers try to hang on after giving up a lead and being forced into overtime. That's still ahead, and so is the story. South Floridians being asked to roll up their sleeves after harsh winter weather causes a national blood donation shortage. Newsbreak will be back in two minutes. Jordan knows he shouldn't eat this entire bowl of nachos, but tonight he's earned that right. Because a few hours ago in the middle of happy hour, he recognized a sign. Not from the gods or a bolt of lightning, but from a double heart, a kissy face, and a fourth ha in ha ha ha. That's when Jordan knew he was buzzed. So when it was time to go, he got a ride home instead of driving. Be a legend like Jordan. Recognize your buzzed warning signs and get a ride home. Buzz driving is drunk driving. My mother was always very familiar with her neighborhood, but one day she stopped at the stop sign for much longer than usual, and uh, she didn't know whether she should go forward or, or turn, and she wasn't even really sure where she was at. It was very unsettling for her. I felt so much better after my son told me, Mom, I don't want you to worry or be afraid. I'll be there for you, and we'll figure it out. 
prepared as your family if a tornado shows up at your doorstep, or a flood, or a hurricane. You can't just turn away a natural disaster. That's why it's important to go to ready.gov plan now. It has the tools and tips you need to make an emergency plan with your family. So if disaster comes knocking, let's go. You'll be ready to help keep your family safe. It's just a pizza. Yes. Make a plan today. blood. South Florida could be the answer for a blood donation shortfall brought on by severe winter weather. Recent cold to our north has caused a frosty response to the calls for blood donations. But as the network's Gabriela Perez reports, sunny South Florida may be the answer. After temperatures dip, so does the amount of people who donate blood but the need for it still remains the same. The winter surge is causing a drastic drop in blood donations. It is important for warm weather areas to give more blood to make up for the shortage. So I think as people from the South, we should take action and make an impact to give those with less benefits as us in the North, especially, and help those in need because uh, I like helping others. And I think to me, it just warms my heart it really does and I just want to make that showable to others and to people all around the world you know especially right here down the south you know whoever could donate and help those in need because to you it's just your blood but to them it's a, their life on the line. Without the drives they've lost the chance to get more than 10,000 units of blood this month. One out of every seven hospitalized need a transfusion. To avoid the shortage, the Red Cross is urging those eligible to roll up their sleeves. Only 3% do, so we're really asking people to come out, make an appointment. South Florida is just one of the locations who can support those in need, as long as you're healthy and feeling well. For more information, visit your local blood bank. For South Florida Media Network, I'm Gabriela Perez. After temperatures dip, the Florida Panthers found themselves on the highlight reel against Toronto Maple Leafs, but for the wrong reason. We don't usually focus on the highlights for the opponents of our local teams, but the Leafs right winger William Nylander cruised through the Panthers defense to score the game winning goal in overtime. The final score was Panthers four, Maple Leafs five. The Cats still earn a point for the overtime loss and they will play the Montreal Canadiens tomorrow at 7 p.m. That's all the time we have for Newsbreak. I'm Amanda Gray. And I'm Kenya Cardone. Get more news anytime at sfmn.fiu.edu.